January, Chelsea and I took a friend to Death Valley, all the way through to California, up Highway 1 along the coastline into California, and then spent several days in the Redwood Forest, and it was absolutely amazing. I'm gonna show you those pictures and all the amazing gear that I brought. I'm very spoiled, so I had all the best stuff in the world. First, I wanna thank our sponsor, KEH, and really, KEH makes this possible in more than one way. They sponsor me, but also I regularly buy and sell gear through them. And the fact that I can sell all my used gear, get my money back instead of having that gear collect dust, allows me to buy stuff from them at a discount that I can continue to use. You can buy most of what I'm gonna show you at keh.com used for a good price with a 180 day warranty and a 14 day return policy. That means it's not like buying used from other places where you could get scammed or you might receive something broken or it breaks the next day and you don't have any recourse. They back this stuff up. If you'd rather talk to a person, call 1-800-DIAL-KEH and either way, use the coupon code TNC20 to get 5% off. Thanks, KEH. Let's talk about my bag first. A good bag makes a huge difference. I used the Peak Design bag for the longest time and it was great, but I hated that the Peak Design bag loaded from the sides. This bag loads from the back, which means I can open it up like this and I get immediate access to all my stuff. This reconfigures and this is plenty of room for me and this is sort of flexible storage up here or I could take out this entire top compartment. You can see it's got lots of little pockets for things like lens caps, ND filters, SD cards, sensor cleaning kit, which I need because I shoot Sony. And it's got a pocket in here for my next thing, which is my MacBook Pro. MacBook Pro with four terabytes is outrageously expensive. It's totally unfair, but that with Final Cut does a better job of editing video on the go, which is something I need to do. If I didn't shoot and need to edit video, I'd probably just get a regular Windows PC. That's what I always use, but the MacBooks are brilliant. It's just, they don't happen to be a great value. This will make you a hero on the next road trip. It's a bag full of USB cables <laughs> because you know, whoever you're traveling with, somebody's gonna forget their USB cable or their charger. My favorite charger is this little, it's labeled clever and you can see it's got four ports on the side and then just a little flip down power outlet. It just means that I only need to carry this one charger and then I plug all my USB stuff into it. Because I have a dumb MacBook, I also have to carry a separate SD card reader for USB-C and this one has my face on it so that nobody else steals it. My daughter did that. I have the best tripod I've ever used for travel, which is the Gitzo Series Zero Traveler. It is also outrageously priced. I told you that I'm spoiled, but it works and maybe more importantly, feels better than anything. I know many of you are just very practical and this is just a tripod. All it does is hold your camera steady, but this one feels so good. The action on the twist locks is just fantastic. Everything fits together with just zero tolerance. Oh, it just feels so nice. And I had a bad experience with three-legged thing twist locks where they kept coming loose as I was walking or driving over bumpy roads, or even just when I was sitting there, it seems like it would just suddenly fall over. These twist locks just happen to work much better. Granted, it's far more expensive, but you kind of get what you pay for with this. And it has a two axis head so I can pan around while keeping everything completely level. And because I also shoot video, that's important to me. The next thing up is this Insta 361R camera, which is, it's a 360 camera. And I don't think anybody really likes to see 360 degree footage, but I think 360 cameras are a better way to do action cameras in general because they capture everything forward, back, left and right. So you pick where you wanna put the 360 camera and then later you can stitch it together into your regular two dimensional video and it ends up looking pretty good. Now the one R, the unique thing about it is that it's modular. You can swap out the lens with something that's more like a conventional GoPro camera. I don't know why I'd want a modular 360 camera. And in fact, I think my favorite 360 camera is still the original Insta 361 camera, which always worked fine and is quite a bit smaller. I was able to strap this to the hood of a car using this little suction cup here. And that sort of gave me outside the vehicle, almost flying shots. I would definitely have brought a bigger suction cup the next time. 
I also brought the Mavic 2 Zoom drone. If you gave me $10,000 and said buy any travel drone, I would still buy the Mavic 2 Zoom. The reception on it is rock solid, which is really important when you're flying around mountains and such. The fact that I can zoom in and out is so useful because there are lots of places where I couldn't get very close to subjects, so I could stay farther back and actually zoom in with the little zoom camera on there. And it's able to go fast enough to really keep up with moving vehicles, which is so important for those sort of tracking shots that I like to put in as I transition and move around to different places. It's not perfect. It gets the props and the shots all the time when you're flying upwind, but it's still, it's the best that currently exists. Let's get to the cool stuff, which is the camera gear, right? My Sony a7R4, my favorite camera of all time. If I could only have one camera, it would be this. And if I could only have one lens, it would be this 16 to 35 F2.8 G Master, which is just so much sharper than any other super wide angle lens that we've ever tested, but it's also pretty small. So this has become just a walking around lens for me. You can see I just have a strap on here and this is how I just actually use it. I just carry it like this when it's not on the tripod. This lens is so good that I did not carry a normal lens. I didn't carry like a 24 to 70. If I wanted to be at 50 millimeters, I would just crop in from 35. And this is a 60 megapixel camera. It has plenty of resolution. The lens is super sharp, saves me having to carry an extra lens. So that jumps me right into the 70 to 200 F2.8. The only other lens that I brought, you can see I have a 1.4 teleconverter on there that I could put on or take off. Some people think you don't need a telephoto lens for landscape shots, but it's so not true. Sometimes a wide angle lens is right for these sort of sweeping landscapes, but other times you want to be able to slice off a narrow piece of the landscape, or you want to compress the distance between foreground and background subjects. We had a beautiful full moon rise that I was able to pinpoint the location of, set an alarm so I could get up early and get out there and line that moonrise up with a really cool barn that I found. And that was one of my most popular pictures from the trip. I had people wanting to buy prints of it as soon as I put it up. So here you can see that proper planning, good gear, and a good trip can really pay off right away through things like fine art print sales. A key part of that, I have to give credit to my smartphone. Now, any smartphone really would be able to do things like plan the location of the moonrise. I was able to use augmented reality to figure out exactly where and when it was going to come up behind the mountain so that I could be in position. Uh, but I still think the iPhone is the best overall system. Even though the Samsung S20 Ultra, we found it had a better camera. This attached to Apple CarPlay in my rental car. It didn't have Android Auto. And that meant I had the exact same user interface in my rental car as I do in my car at home. It meant that all my contacts and destinations were loaded up in here. I connected to my Apple Watch, which works, works just fantastically. And you can see I have, you know, like the sunrise and sunset and moon phases on my Apple Watch. I find it so useful to have that information along with the current weather information for photography because it's just constantly reminding me, okay, the sun is setting in 20 minutes. You need to get to your spot. One last thing, we shot video there. So I brought my Sony mic. This is the URX P03D. And the reason I like this particular model is it can receive from two different mics at the same time, it splits them into the left and right stereo channels on your camera. That's because there's two of us. There's me and Chelsea and we're both on camera and sometimes we talk at the same time. So I was able to record a video there. Now I use my Sony camera, which I don't normally do. I actually had a lot of complaints about the autofocus on the one video that I published from that trip. And the reason people were complaining about the autofocus is because I was using a Sony camera instead of a Canon camera. Sorry to throw you under the bus, Sony. This is the best stills camera, but it's not my favorite video camera in the world, even though it does a pretty passable job. In the comments down below, I'd love to hear what your favorite travel gear is, or maybe even what your pl favorite place to visit is, since I can't go anywhere right now, but maybe I could live vicariously through your past experiences. And I'd also like to thank our sponsor, KEH. KEH.com or 1-800-DIAL-KEH is the best place to sell and buy used gear. They have a massive inventory, more than 60,000 items, including things like a Sony a7R Mark IV, or you get a Sony a7R Mark III, or even the original Sony a7R. So if you want a camera like this, you basically pick which generation you want and they'll give you the best price available. 
This comes with a 180-day warranty and a 14-day return period. So there's really no risk. If you don't like it, you send it back to them and you're not out anything. So clean out your closet, get rid of all that old gear you have, and then take that money and spend it at KEH and get yourself some news gear <laughs> from them. All right, thanks for sponsoring us, KEH. Check out the link in the description below. Bye.